two, one, zero. Okay, position. All right, we're on day two, heading to NASA right now. Today's gonna be a full day. Tonight, the launch, the SpaceX Falcon Heavy, is scheduled for 11.30 p.m. Weather is beautiful, but so, so hot. Uh, but other than that, yeah, uh, things I think are looking good, and I'm really, really excited. Today's gonna be an amazing day, and I'll bring you guys along to at least some of the things that we're doing. There's the Falcon Heavy. We're actually at launch pad 39A right now. We're actually on the launch pad, which is pretty incredible. Those towers are so huge. I'm just walking over here so you can see a little. There's where we were before. There's the VAB. It looks like it's just small in the distance, but remember that thing's huge. Seventh largest building in the world. This is 39B. 39B. It's so cool to be over here actually at the launch pad, like on it, not just by it. Interface to the vehicle was from the mobile launcher, from the mobile launcher only. When we modified the pad for shuttle, we put the we took the structure off the mobile launcher and put it on the pad surface. We did that because the crawler couldn't carry something that had both the six solid rocket boosters the shuttle had and a tower. So in shuttle, you had a lot of connections straight from the pad to the vehicle. In this program, the SLS program, we went and modified the mobile launcher or the crawler transporter so it could carry that mobile launcher with a big heavy rocket and the tower. So our current mobile launcher will carry a lot more weight than it could back in the uh, shuttle program and, and earlier. <laughs> All these quicker, we tried to do it just like what's in your uh, fireplace at home, only thicker. The purpose of the water isn't cool, it's just purely it's sound suppression. Well, 2016 found sort of our final payload. Um, it's from a company called Celestis. Um, they actually fly. Uh, cremated remains. So if that's kind of your final wish, you want to go into space, that's what they do. Um, so it's a really cool company. Um, the families came in and you know got to see the satellite a couple years ago. Um, a lot of them are here to launch uh, today. Um, and I think uh, there's a documentary about that company um, on the Smithsonian Channel that's uh, uh, premiering soon as well. So um, that's kind of our TV. Um, tonight we so one thing we do at GA, um, you know, we see these missions through um, sort of the whole life cycle. So it started just as something on paper, and then tonight we actually have operators that are going to be operating this thing once we get the initial uh, signal. So it's it's been great to be a part of. Um, you know, I've been down here since uh, the middle of May, kind of doing the finishing touches on the satellite and actually seeing it get put on the escort ring that it's going to fly on tonight. Um, so it's been uh, yeah, it's been an exciting journey. That's really all I have to say about that. So, if there are any questions, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I read I read a little bit into the Celeste. Yeah. Or Celestis. Mm -hmm. And how is that going to be dispersed? If you happen to know. Yeah. Well, they don't really get dispersed per se um, when we deorbit, which is um, pretty much 25 years from now. They just burn up in the atmosphere. Okay, so, so it's just no, going to stay on the satellite. Yeah, yeah. So they're all in, in capsules, pretty much. Um, and then those are on, you guys, uh, kind of the bottom of the satellite. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not sent out or dispersed in any way, but they burn up at the end of life. Okay. Oh, really? Well, I just think, like, I, I went to Los Angeles to become an actor so that I could be on Star Trek. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I got that wish, and uh, I also was a singer at the time, and I got to sing for James Doohan once. And okay. tonight, you know, that part of is going up. It's, it's sort of an amazing thing. I don't know yeah. if you guys that. But so our level of excitement of seeing this incredible thing go up, but we haven't been working on these projects that yeah. you guys have. I'm 
just curious as to your level of excitement, how you feel about this, and, you know, like, I can't even imagine. No one's ever curious about my level. <laughs> 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 but you've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, yeah, just from sort of the uh, the engineer's perspective, it's been pretty amazing. Uh, the whole journey, just seeing this whole just the whole integration phase over the last month has just been, you know, amazing to be a part of. So all these satellites were kind of doing work concurrently, and they all kind of came together. <laughs> Actually, put on these the stack of rings and encapsulate the bearings. Yeah, it's impressive. You guys are so, I mean, you're all very subdued and collected, and, and you know, <laughs> compose yourselves very, very well. But I just wonder at what point do you just. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys we are I don't even know how close we're like right across the road from the Falcon Heavy I can zoom in all the way and can't even see the whole thing now basically there's just that fence here and then there's the rocket this is incredible I wish the fence wasn't there though so you could see it a little bit better but I'll take it just a couple of hours <laughs> this whole thing, well, yeah, actually, I think all of it, or most of it, is it's going to be up into space. The top part uh, is going to stay, the boosters, you can see I'm trying not to get in anyone's way here. Uh, there's three boosters on it, you can sort of see it here. Uh, those are all going to be coming back to Earth, so I'll go up into space and the boosters come back, so. There's the SpaceX building, uh, it's hard to see through the fence, oh, there you go. SpaceX. There she is, the talking heavy. I found out if we went back a bit, we can actually see the whole ship from behind the arrow above the fence here. Look at that. SpaceX over there. And we just got the rest of our NASA social group here. Everyone's just busy taking pictures. for the 45th Operations Group Detachment 3, uh, known as the Department of Defense Human Space Flight Support Office. Um, I'm going to play you a quick video that basically explains everything that we do in our history. We do, and then I'll just open it up for questions, um, and I'll answer whatever I can. And we'll have a, I have a PJ uh, expert here, also GS, who will talk about the equipment, any questions you have on all this equipment and stuff sitting around. <laughs> So this is where all the astronauts came out to get into the, uh, the van to go over to the shuttle. Uh, you don't want slow the camera down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting out of the photo shoot, yeah. There we go. Give me some music. So 
so we're over at the launch site right now. Uh, that's where the Falcon Heavy is going to be taking off. And then sort of over here, a panel there, you guys can't even see what I'm showing. But over on that side where it's all lit up over here, yeah, you can't really see it. Uh, that's where uh, the landing site's going to be. And over there, yeah, of course, well, you can sort of see. There's the moon, which looks really awesome here. So it's about a half an hour or so, uh, 40 minutes, I guess, to launch. We're just waiting here. I don't know how good of a video I'm going to be able to get here at night, but I'm going to let it roll and we'll see what we get. Um, we're going to just be watching in general. You really want to get scared as well. So I didn't have a chance to wrap up the trip last night. Uh, after the launch, we were whisked away right over to the bus and then you know, driven off to where our cars were parked and went back to the hotel and basically just crashed right away because right now, as you can see, I am driving back home. Uh, or well, the Tesla's driving itself. But anyway, um, the, the launch was really, really cool. Uh, I Just comparing it to the other one that I've been to, the um, uh, STS-132, which was the second to last launch of Atlantis, um, we were able to watch that one slightly closer to where it took off, uh, though we didn't go there for this one because they sort of put us in the middle of both where it took off and where the boosters landed. And I think we actually had one of the best spots to watch the boosters land, so it was a trade-off in, in that regards. But uh, as a result, since we were a little further away from the takeoff location, it wasn't quite as 
uh, as it all took off. But it still was a really, really great show. I don't think I really got much on the camera just due to it being pitch black out and I don't know, I, I was more trying to just take in the amazing sights there and it was really, really amazing. So yeah, I apologize if the video I actually got of it looks kind of bad because yeah. Uh, I am really, really grateful though to NASA Social for inviting me to this event because it was, it really, really was amazing. Okay, this truck is trying to kill me right now. I gotta. <laughs> That's why you do have to pay attention with autopilot because sometimes, um, yeah, trucks want to run you off the road. But anyway. Um, yeah, oh, what I was trying to say was that one of the really, really cool things about it was not only do we get to see the launch, which uh, when I was going into this, I thought that was going to be the most amazing thing, but in all seriousness, one of the coolest things was meeting the scientists or just the companies and the people that dedicated five, ten years of their lives to the experiments that were going up. And, you know, they, that launch was really the beginning of, uh, well, the end of, oh, you guys know, the end of, like, an era of uh, that, you know, they, they were building all of these projects, but then also the start of being able to actually test out what they've worked on, and I, I, I don't know, I never realized, I guess, just how much work went into all of the experiments and satellites that go up on these things. So it was just really cool. And like we were literally meeting the people that, you know, dedicated their lives uh, to, to working on these. So I don't know. That part was just, it was really, really cool. Like, I, again, I thought that, you know, seeing the rocket go up was going to be the highlight, but it was actually meeting the people whose work was going up on it that actually was even more special. So anyway, end of the trip I got like 10 hours or so of uh, just driving to do right now but again having a self-driving car it makes it really easy so I'm gonna just knock through it and yeah thanks for watching this little mini trip that I took